caméra là ou celle-là Hello everybody, I'm Cédric Bélanger, Product Marketing Manager at uh, OptiSensis. Sébastien Abraham, Product Owner, Head of Display, and Thomas Lejeune, Sales This Generation. Uh, Optis uh, is the world leading company in virtual prototyping, recently affiliated with ANSYS. Optis provides simulation software, allowing you to accurately simulate optics, that is, uh, the performances of light, uh, human, and or sensor vision, and materials uh, in interaction. Thanks to Optis, you can imagine, design, and virtually experience what you will get during all the stages of the, the design, engineering and manufacturing uh, process of a HUD system. This webinar is a part of a, a webinar series. Uh, the first one has been delivered in, in June, takes the lead on HUD development in automotive. It was an overview uh, on, uh, on the HUD topic. And today um, we deliver a, a webinar dedicated to, to the windshield uh, as this is a, a key optical element. So Seb, why the windshield is so interesting? So first, hello everyone and welcome to this webinar. So to, to answer you, the windshield is a really a key optical element for several reasons. Uh, first, the windshield design comes from the design department. O of course, the windshield needs to respect some standards in terms mainly for sa sa safety. It must to uh, correctly transmit the image to not deform too much the image, but with the heads-up display we will go one step further as we will use the windshield as an optical element. So it brings more constraints in terms of the shape of the windshield, but also on the quality of the shape of the windshield. So it's why it's a very interesting topic because of that there is several issues. Also the heads-up display bring more complexity in the windshield. It will bring a wedge angle, so an angle between the inner surface and the outer surface of the windshield. It will also bring some coating um, so we'll change the way we design and produce the, the windshield. So in this webinar we won't see any use case, so we'll just see some use case. It's why I encourage you to, uh, to ask your question on what we'll present, but also on other related topics. In this uh, webinar we'll see first how to determine the design, uh, th sorry, the um, projector image. Uh, the position and the orientation of the testing device early in the process when you don't have yet the mirrors of the head-up display. Then we will talk about the ghost uh, as it's uh, probably one of the first issue people think when we talk about windshield in the head-up display context. Then we'll see how to modelize more complex windshield for multi-layer windshield and windshield with coating. And then we'll talk about assembly tolerances and the impact of these assembly tolerances on the quality of the head-up display. So first, how to determine the position of the testing device um, early in the process. So where the goal will be to, uh, in fact, meet the target image uh, without the mirrors. So we'll determine what we will call the projector image, that is, in fact, the position of, of the um, testing device, the when we unfold uh, the, the projector uh, system. And also, we'll compute uh, how to warp the image displayed by the testing device. So for that, I will directly uh, show you in the CAD software. So here I have basic inputs, the windshield and my uh, iBox position, so the center of the central iBox. And from that, I will um, create a line between my iBox and my target image, and I will make this, this line reflected by the windshield. So now I know my projector image is along this line. I don't know yet the distance between the windshield and my projector image, and I don't know yet the orientation of my projector image. So it's what we will see right now. So first, I will create, I will analyze the system with the analysis tool. Um, so we already did a webinar on this tool and on all other Adobe display tools. So here I will just use it. I won't have the time to present in detail this tool, so I encourage you to see other webinars if you need more details on that. So here I enter the windshield. On mirror tab, I don't enter any mirrors. I, I don't have it. And I will use the picture generation unit tab, the PGU tab, to um, define where is my projector image. Uh, I will decrease the sampling to, increase the simula to decrease the simulation time. And I will increase the size of my projector image 
uh, as it represents the size of the testing device. And on the report tab, I will select the projector image test. We'll see uh, just after why. When I update the feature, I will analyze my system. And because I selected the projector image test, I have here two outputs. That is the, vi um, the distance between the virtual image and the target image. And the field curvature, we call that here the field curvature, it's in fact the uh, difference between the perfect plane that the target image is and the virtual image. So here, as you can see, I don't reach correctly my target image. So then I will use the space optimizer to optimize the distance between the windshield and the projector image in order to reach the target, um, the target image. So as variable, I will take the distance between the windshield and the projector image. Uh, it's here, Up. from 0 to 1,000. Um, and as target, I will come here to select the distance between the virtual image and the target image uh, produced by the analysis tool. I will change some termination criteria. And now I can launch the optimization. And we will see that the optimization tool will uh, smartly test different distances to reach uh, the good one, in fact, to, to, to um, output the one that will allow us to reach the target image. Seb, so how long does it take? Um, so, so it will I, it will depend of the quality uh, of, of the final quality you want for the optimization. But here you will see that uh, for a good uh, first approximation, it takes less than one minute. Um, so uh, after, if you want a better quality, you can increase the number of samples on the analysis part, or you can uh, play with the termination criteria of the optimizer. So the time can depend of, of that, but basically it's quite fast. And it's one of the key points, in fact, is really to have a, a fast um, way to determine the position of the projector image in order to be able to do that on each shape of the windshield, on, on each it iteration, in fact. So after the optimization, he asked me if, if I want to update the variable with the best solution. I will click yes. And now here, the va this distance has, be has been changed with the best one. So now, if I reopen the analysis tool um, on the visualization tab, on the target, I will see that, oh, sorry, here I reach my target image. As my distance here has been computed only for the center point, I reach it perfectly only for the center point. So now, as you see, the virtual image is slightly tilted uh, from the target image. So we'll play with the orientation of the uh, projector image to correct that. So it's an op uh, we will use the same thing. The op uh, we'll use the space optimizer. As a variable, we'll take the two angles. Sorry, up, I will close that. We'll take these two ang uh, angles. Ah, it's in milliradian. Uh, just, I will change here. Uh, up, in degree, it will be better. And uh, we will optimize these two angles so the orientation of the projector image to change the, the field curvature, in fact, the distance between the virtual image and the target image. So it's something I already done. I won't do it here to save some time. And here, I will run again the uh, analysis. Up. And here, the, the variable, so the, sorry, the target will be the field curvature, the distance. So here we see that it's better. And this way, you can now um, you can run the analysis with more samples, and we can correctly understand the impact of your windshield shape on the head-up display quality. So typically, here you see that you have here some uh, distances. So, uh, so you have a field curvature here. OK? OK, so the, as a conclusion, the value here is our solution is answering the need, mm -hmm. uh, the precise need uh, of, uh, of the customer, of our customers. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it saves a lot of time. Yeah, it's mainly the, the key point is to determine that quickly, uh, to be able to do it uh, as many times uh, as we want, because there is uh, several iterations. And it's something that is really important to check all in the process to correct the, the shape. And uh, we'll see later that we'll use also this projector image to determine a proof concept of the wedge angle and to do some other tests. So it's really something that it's needed early in the, in the process. So I remind you, you uh, interact with us and answer the poll. 
uh, on Bcast. Um, now we ask you to rate the value of uh, what has mm -hmm. been presented, uh, the value of this solution on this topic, uh, the projector image. Thomas is behind the... Yeah, behind the desk and um, yeah, doing the, the rating. Okay, so um, now let's carry on with the second topic, the yeah, ghost image. The ghost. So as, as I said, it's probably one of the first issues that people think about when we talk about windshield in, um, in the heads of display. So the need first is to simulate this issue, to understand if you have this issue or not on, on your system. Ghost image is double image. Huh? Exactly. The ghost image is a double image. So in fact, you have the main image that is a reflection of the picture generation unit. So in this case, uh, the projector, uh, the testing device on the inner surface of the windshield. And the ghost image is a reflection of this uh, light, of this image on the outer surface of the windshield. So, it's, um, so the first part is a simulation of that uh, to, to know the luminance of the main image and the ghost image. Also to qualify, um, to quantify geometrically the distance between the, um, the ghost image and the, the main image to be sure that the um, driver won't perceive it. So it's the second need uh, after um, analyzing and uh, experiencing the, the ghost, the goal will be to correct that. So it's mainly done in by introducing a wedge angle. So we'll see how to optimize that um, to find the best wedge angle uh, to minimize the, the ghost, to overlap the main image with the ghost. So we'll do the same thing as we done on the projector image. So we'll uh, first introduce the wedge angle through uh, a CAD parameter. Then we'll use the analysis tool to analyze the ghost image produced by this wedge angle. And then with the optimization module, we'll optimize this wedge angle. So the goal of that, so uh, after the, uh, the optimization, we'll have a report with the best uh, wedge angle to use. But also the, the main goal of that is uh, to, to be able to change the definition of the ghost, so the matrix of the ghost, and really use the, um, the matrix that come from the car makers. Uh, so, so you can really customize the wedge angle uh, thanks to the point you want to take into account on the target image or the point you want to take into account on the... Uh, on the iBox, or if you want to take into account several iBoxes or not. Um, so I will just. Up. So here I have an outer surface of my windshield with uh, a rotation axis here where I will define the wedge angle. So here it's zero for, uh, for now. Oh. One click. Ah, up. Uh, I, I will put in mirror radiant as it's better to read a, a, a wedge angle. Um, and now on the analysis tool, on the windshield tab, I will select my outer surface. And on the report tab, I will now select the uh, ghost, the wedge angle determination uh, that will in fact change here my output for the ghost value. So here it's really the plugin, so the plugin I selected that will compute this value. It's why it's important to uh, have this analysis tool in the loop. So I can this way really have these values that come from the metrics, um, from the car makers or from how I'm my own metrics. Uh, how would you define the, the target, the metrics? Um, just, I will lo launch the simulation and answer then your question. Up, up. So I do the same thing here. For the present ah. example, we do have 5,000 time saving for mm -hmm. projector image. OK. So w what was your question? How, how do you define the, the target, the metrics? So, so the, the matrix is defined, um, so, so it depends, uh, the definition of the matrix depends on uh, the car maker or the supplier. There is several ways to define the matrix, even if it still represents the same issue. Um, so you can take into account several points on the iBox, or you can take into account only the center point of the iBox if you want to optimize only for one point, but it's not always the case, as you have both eyes and none of these eyes are at the center point. So this way, using this analysis, you can really take into account a lot of uh, different parameters. So here now I have my correct watch angle, 0 0.312. And here I can, on the visualization tab, I can hide the target image and display the ghost image and the ghost axis. So we'll see that here it's overlap. And with a wedge angle of zero, 
Hop. Here we see the difference. So with with a wedge angle of zero, we have some ghost, and with the correct wedge angle, uh, this one, we correct this ghost. So yeah, it's really the the, the, the key point to to use the ghost definition uh, of the OEM or um, up. Mm. So uh, as we see here, we optimize the ghost on one eye box. So you talk about the ghost definition. So some uh, people prefer to minimize the mean of the ghost, and some other prefer prefer to define the, mac the to optimize the maximum of the ghost over the target image. So that's why it's important to be able to change this definition. It can also be changed to take into account several eye boxes and optimize um, the wedge angle uh, as a mean of all of all eye boxes. And you can also take into account assembly uh, tolerances or other stuff like that when you optimize your wedge angle. So here, for example, uh, I run the simulation to optimize on uh, f the three eye boxes. So the wedge angle changed sli slightly, um, but because here it's optimized to have uh, an average cost over all eye boxes as minimum as possible. And because you can control this uh, this way to optimize the uh, wedge angle, you can go further and uh, define the variable wedge uh, wedge uh, angle profile along your windshield. So to do that, we just define several eye boxes on the analysis tool. It will define automatically several target image at the freeform mirror turns, and it will define several points on the windshield. And I can come and optimize each wedge angle, uh, the wedge angle on each point on the windshield. So then if I uh, classify the, the, um, the different points by the distance between this point and the windshield bottom, I can have the profile of uh, the variable wedge angle I will need. So different wedge angle for different distance, uh, for different points all along the windshield. So this way I can optimize the ghost for all drivers um, the, and not having only one perfect ghost for the central driver. So uh, as a conclusion, the value here is the possibility to adapt the metrics. That is to say, for the windshield manufacturer, to, to, uh, he is able to adapt the metrics mm -hmm. of the car maker and, and to solve the issues precisely with the metrics of, of the car maker. E exactly. He, here we show that on the uh, ghost use case and on the projector use case. But the fact that we can use the analysis tool and combine it with the optimization tool, it's a lot of possibilities. Uh, always based on the definition of uh, of the car maker, or of the definition of the metrics of the car maker, or always checking that it respects their acceptance criteria and so on. So it's really the, the key point here is really to introduce this definition uh, in the uh, optimization loop. I think it's time to uh, to check uh, what was the rating and yeah, the feedback from the first part. Yeah, first. Okay. You can display the result right now. Uh, for the projector image determination, we do have um, an average uh, ra rate of 4.4 uh, out of 5. And the uh, principal benefits are uh, the time saving mm -hmm. uh, for, for these parts. Yeah. OK, so um, you will launch the second Yeah, it's topic. already launched. It's you already you launched, you so can you can uh, already answer the second question for the regarding ghost issue. The the voilà the ghost issue and uh, and we will uh, we will continue with the the third part the windshield mm -hmm. modelization exactly so here is um, to show you basically how we can modelize a windshield in a more precise way uh, modelizing each layer of the windshield uh, if there is a windshield with coating is how to modelize this windshield with coating. So it can be done for several things uh, to, to check the quality of the windshield, but also to produce uh, marketing materials. Um, here it's an example, a very simple example on the thin glass. So here we did the simulation for different thickness of the windshield, and we can this way correlate the uh, thickness of the windshield with the distance between the main image and the ghost image. So with the ghost issue, in fact. And also on that, we can do the same thing as previous, so optimize the wedge angle. And we'll see that, um, depending on the thickness of the windshield, we'll be able with one, edge ang uh, one wedge angle to optimize the ghost quality only for the center eye box. And the issue starts to appear for some part of the image for the upper and lower eye box when the thickness of the windshield is quite uh, around 5 millimeter. And we'll 
check this with a thinner windshield and here uh, on the uh, up for the upper eye box and lower eye box the, the ghost is almost invisible so the simulation allow you to check all that and to, to be sure that for each driver and each part of the uh, virtual image everything is okay um, uh, other thing I was talking about uh, coating, for, so for example the defrosting coating, you, you need uh, to check if the windshield will be used on a heads-up display context, you need to check the impact of this coating on the uh, reflection of the image. If it produces third image, if it produces other uh, uh, parasite uh, reflections. So thanks to the simulation you, you can do that. You can also, uh, a simulation that I hear, uh, pr promote the fact that uh, th your windshield won't deform too much the, the image and will correct the ghost. So thanks to the simulation you can have this kind of result where you can move into the eye box. So here we see that I need to correct slightly my windshield shape at the, the image when I move into the eye box uh, move a lot. And I can also see the difference between the windshield without wedge angle and with wedge angle for different points on the eye box. Another example, more complex here, is how to simulate coating um, that will uh, play with the polarization of the light. So I take this example of the polarized windshield, and here we did the simulation uh, for several uh, states of, uh, the of the windshield. So the principle here is to have uh, the TFT, so the PGU, um, in this way of polarization, and when the light will be reflected by the windshield, um, it will not be reflected by the first part as we are uh, at the Brewster angles, uh, but it will go through the windshield. The polarization will be changed by the half wave plate or by the coating that plays the role of the half wave plate, and it will be reflected on the outer surface of the windshield. Then th the light will come back, it will change again when it goes through the half wave plate, and then go to the uh, driver eyes. So here we simulated a traditional windshield without this coating and without wedge angle, so where we can see that we have the ghost. With wedge angle, we can correct this ghost. But if we take into account the polarization, the so classic polarization that is uh, currently used, you will see that with polar polarized sunglasses, um, you will totally cut the image. So here we, uh, for the demo purpose, we are perfectly at the booster angle, so we totally cut the image to uh, emphasize the issue. But you can do this simulation on a, on a real use case to um, measure the luminance that go through or not the polarized sunglasses. With the windshield, uh, with the, um, the polarized um, film, you can change the polarization of the, the projector image. And this way, the polarization that arrive to the eyes of the driver go through the polarized sunglasses and this way can see the image with or without polarized sunglasses. So all this advantage of different coating or different kind of function can be simulated and emphasis. So can we also have a, a real-time uh, a, a tool to simulate in real-time the quality of the head-up display and the quality of the windshield to see the ghost and uh, mainly for, for demo purpose or for marketing materials. Uh, here we have other effects also due to the windshield. Uh, so the other part. So yeah, the, the, the value here clearly is that you, you are able to simulate all types of windshield. Uh, exactly. He, here the, the, the goal is really to simulate the windshield with all the complexity of the windshield, all the layers, the coatings, uh, for two purposes, mainly to check if everything is okay, but also to produce marketing materials uh, to promote the, 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 new, yeah, the new technology you, uh, you have in exactly. your windshield. Exactly. Okay. Um, maybe Thomas want to... Uh yeah, the, the windshield modelization uh, ranking is open, so you can uh, rate it. And uh, for the last one, for the answering the ghost issue, uh, the rank is 4.2 out of 5. Um, and uh, the benefits the most is uh, sa it saves so much time okay. and uh, it's very efficient. Okay, it's yeah, a very interesting feedback. You can rate it now for the windshield modelization. Thank you. So last last part of the webinar the yeah. assembly tolerancing now we uh, have uh, to produce the windshield uh, exactly <laughs> <laughs> and you, you have to put the windshield uh, on the car so it's very important to check uh, the assembly tolerancing and especially the impact it will have on the quality of the head-up display so here it's at the end of the process 
Um, but as we use the windshield as an optical surface of this system, uh, any change on this optical surface will automatically affect the quality of the head-up display. So we can simulate all the stack of assembly tolerancing. So here we will see how to do that on the windshield part, but of course it can be applied to all the projector part, um, the assembly of the projector housing and each mirrors and the picture generation unit. So the goal will be to simulate um, different positions of the windshield and to have one report that compute all this data to, uh, in fact, convert the, um, the acceptance criteria in terms of optical quality of the, of the head-up display into mechanical uh, tolerances uh, on, the, on assembly tolerances, in fact. And then it will produce a report like that with uh, a sum up. So here we um, change the position of the windshield in three directions and we rotate the windshield in also three directions. And you can see that for some configuration, um, you need to go in details because potentially there is an, an issue. So I, I can show you uh, up in the CAD software how to do that. Up. So here I will reuse my simulation. I will change my windshield to be sure that I use the windshield that, uh, that is here because it will, uh, oh, I need to put it on the inner surface. And on the report tab, I will select the assembly tolerance report. Uh, I will also activate that. So, um, I, I need also, oh, okay. So here I did a very simple case. I, I have a, a windshield that will rotate around the y-axis of this axis system, so just to simulate a, a difference uh, here. Uh, I will change again the angles by degree. And this uh, variable, this CAD variable, is piloted by a design table that will test several configurations. So here I have only a few configurations for demo purpose, but we can test uh, as much as configuration you want. I need here up, to enter on the general tab th this design table. And now when I launch the simulation, it will analyze each configuration. Um, so I don't know if we can see here, maybe the rotation are too small, but the, the windshield will rotate here and we will analyze each configuration. So we can also do that for uh, the free rotation and the free translation. We can also, th th there is two main purpose to convert the assembly tolerance, uh, to convert the um, um, criteria in terms of optical quality into assembly tolerance, but also to evaluate how many produced windshield will be usable in terms of heads-up display. If on this um, uh, variation I use Gaussian distribution, for example, I can simulate the, uh, the um, production line. So as a report, I will have here my configuration. Uh, I can show you here a report that turned on several configurations. So I have the errors due um, to the fact that the windshield is at a bad position and the warping doesn't hit anymore the picture generation unit. It's outside of the picture generation unit. Um, here we can see that I, I did the analyze over several samples uh, on the iBox for several iBoxes and uh, on with several samples on the virtual image uh, through uh, several um, metrics and through 30 configurations. So I analyze uh, in total more than 1 million of data in less than three hours. And I have one report that sum up all these data. So it's also a very interesting point because producing data is quite simple, but then you need to correctly analyze it and to correctly detect where are the issues. So that's why we have also the colors here to directly see that on configuration one, for example, I have an issue with my field curvature. So then I can click on that and detect that it's for the upper eye box that I have the issue. It's for this point on the eye box and it's for this point on the virtual image. From that, I can take a decision. It's happened only for one point where I won't display any, uh, anything. So maybe it's okay. Or maybe I will change my shape of the windshield to, to have a better quality here. And it will give me other information. Here in red, I have all the, um, the cropped image, so when the, the assembly tolerance make the image go outside of mirrors or outside of picture generation unit. 
And you have Basically. this very visual, I do like it. I definitely yeah. do like <laughs> the very <laughs> visual, I these ones. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Yeah, here I, it's yeah. a report produced by HOA, the analysis tool, so it's totally customizable. Here it's an example we did for assembly tolerances, you but yeah. you can totally customize that, have 3D view of uh, some graph if you want, and so on. Yeah, so this is the link between assembly tolerancing and optical quality. Exactly, it's to make the link between both. Thanks for that. Uh, maybe a yep. last check on the... Um, on the last results for um, the windshield modelization, the rank is 4.6 out of 5, and um, the benefits uh, concern all the windshield, they say, mm -hmm. and the keywords. So that was for the previous parts, and um, this part is now open, so you can uh, just rank it right now. Okay, and um, I think we will just, I will come back on, on, on this one later. Maybe we can jump to the question as we are a little yeah. late. Um, and and then, yeah. So the question will appear. So I do have something. Okay, maybe I can show you the question we yeah. have. We have a question from this uh, panel. Akash I can I can display it. Uh, Right now. So that the ghost image is better in high thickness windshield or low thickness. Did you say the, the so question? It's display, yeah. Okay. If, um, if you don't put a wedge angle, uh, it's better in low thickness. After the simulation will allow you to uh, visually see if it's acceptable or not. If you put a, a wedge angle, it's better also in low thickness uh, for all the drivers. So uh, after it will depend also uh, of your uh, technical solution. The main technical solution here is to uh, put a wedge angle. Uh, if you use coating, maybe it's different. Uh, but for, for the ghost issue, I, I would say that the low thickness of, of the windshield uh, is probably the, the best solution for, for the ghost issue, mainly. Do we have um, other questions? I don't think we have another question yet, okay. but I can close the, um, the polls. Uh, so for assembly tolerancing, we have a rank of 4.67 out of 5. And um, the benefits, uh, the reports look really precise. They like the ergonomics. Yeah, that's a, a strong okay. point. Any so more questions? I don't think we have more questions, but okay. feel free okay. to... Not to yeah, you can, you can, you can even even you after the webinar, the, the, the bcast, so you can you can continue to answer mm -hmm. the, the, the question. But Ask even your question. even after the webinar, if after you have any webinar, question, uh, you I can contact us. And I will just display the, the planning yeah. because we have uh, here. Yeah. So yeah, I, I forgot to mention that all the webinars are on YouTube. So uh, the first one is available on YouTube. You will receive uh, the planning of yeah. the webinar. Yes. After the, the webinar, uh, if, you are, if, you, if you are connected to Bcast. Yeah, there is an agenda where you can find uh, all the dates. All the dates, and, uh, and you can also... Uh, um, uh, there is a link on the previous There is a link, yeah, webinar. for all the webinars that, yeah. uh, that are already available on, on YouTube. Uh, this one will be available, of course. Uh, and um, and uh, don't uh, forget to uh, join the next webinar, to register for the next webinar. Uh, October 30th, um, and then uh, yeah, I think this is the end. If there is a, a question, I don't think there is no more question uh, for now. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Feel free to contact us, mm -hmm. uh, of course, through the the website. Uh, the contact us, and also you have uh, our uh, email addresses, mm -hmm. both Sebastian and I. Uh, for the technical question, more <laughs> Sebastian. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. And uh, talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye bye.